welcome to my cabin in Costa Rica. So here it is. I posted a reel a couple weeks ago and it got way bigger than I thought. People love the process and the most common question I got was, how much does it cost to build this thing? And I'm gonna break that down for you, but first, let's do a quick tour. All right, so first let's start with the specs of the place because uh, that obviously is going to affect construction price. Uh, the actual footprint, what you see between the four corners of the house, inside space, this is four and a half meters wide by five meters deep. There's a loft upstairs that covers four and a half meters the width and it's the back three meters. So you've got three and a half by four and a half on top four and a half by five on the bottom. That includes the bathroom in there, which is approximately 2.6 meters by 1.8 meters. Then you've got this beautiful deck area, which is two meters out like this, and then four and a half meters wide. Plus I added a little wraparound on it. So these are 60 centimeters and 60 around the wraparound. Now under, there's a bodega. So the bodega is 2.3 by 2.3 approximately. Um, exact measurements is out, but there's uh, about five square meters of storage down there. All right, so let's get into the cost breakdown. Okay, first off, before you build, you need design, engineering, and permits. That came out to $3,213. That might seem cheap to some, to some maybe not, uh, I think I got a good deal. I found that through my contractor and uh, he was a one-stop shop. He did the architecture and the engineering and he uh, submitted to permitting. So that was a pretty quick process. Uh, I already knew what I wanted. I sent it over and then he just verified that the place was structurally sound and then off to permitting. So we actually didn't do any excavation for the house. It was on a hill. It was impossible to get here. Plus. I wanted to build it on a hill. That just came from extending the road from where the road already was to a new area here and make a little parking area. And the most expensive part is dropping off road base, which is $250 per dump truck. They came and did that really quickly. Uh, and I'm really glad we did because uh, now we have a really great parking area. And that was $3,000. Okay, next we've got uh, pretty much the hard stuff, the concrete, the rebar. So this house is on pillars. There are nine pillars supporting the house and there's three pillars that have extended out to support the deck. That's 12 pillars. There's no concrete foundation or anything like that. There is concrete in the inside downstairs there, uh, four inches of concrete. And then the bodega as well has a concrete floor. The total cost of the concrete, cement bags, the mix called basso, which is basically gravel and sand that comes pre-mixed and you throw it into the cement mixer. And rebar is $3,019.77. Okay, next you've got metal. So this is a metal frame house. Uh, this is metal here. And coming off of the pillars, you've got a sill plate and then, which is basically just a metal plate, sits on top of the pillars. And then you've got the columns coming up. This is all four by four. It's mostly four by four, except for here, I used a four by six. I bought the uh, thicker metal that's possible. Uh, it's not too much more. And well, obviously it's a lot safer. It's a lot uh, more rigid. Um, so all of the metal costs $7,234. Next thing is electrical. My meter box is 180 meters that way, so I had to bury 180 meters of line. Uh, I used two watt cable, aluminum cable. There's a lot of uh, digging a trench, running the wire, and then all of the internal wiring, um, plus uh, an electrician to come out and do the initial hookups. I'm the one who like put in all the screws in the sockets and that sort of stuff, but uh, an electrician was there to essentially wire it from the control panel. Uh, I got a really good deal because I'm doing another construction over there 
And the guy who was doing the construction over there, uh, I asked him to come over for uh, a few days. And so he gave me like a pretty good deal on doing that. Plus, there's really not that much. We laid the groundwork, he came in, did the wire runs and also that sort of stuff. So the electrical was $2,673.93. Let's talk wood. All of the wood in this house, that's not the furniture. Basically the deck and the ceiling and the exterior cladding over there. This is all uh, treated pine from a place up in San Isidro called Eco Maderas. Everybody that I talked to said that they're the absolute best in this area. Even though it's pine, which is unusual for here. Uh, I've had people, you know, my neighbor has a deck that's been there for 12 years, treated pine. It looks great. It's been holding up great. So yeah, so I got the decking and the side cladding and the roof. I think that's all the wood from them. And that was $6,238. All right, so now let's move on to glass. Some of you might be wondering, that's a lot of glass. How much did that cost? And yes, it is a lot of glass. It's essentially on three sides, floor to double high ceilings over here. So aluminum is actually what costs more in the construction, the aluminum that frames around the glass. So for all of the glass windows, we decided to tack weld in little strips of uh, half inch by half inch metal and then put the window up and then tack weld the window in place. Now, if the window breaks, it's not, it's a little harder than if it was with aluminum, but it's really not that much. You just take an angle grinder, you cut those tack welds and you remove uh, the, the little half inch by half inch that's basically on both sides of the window and you replace the window. All right, so the cost for the glass and also that includes this accordion door that only comes in a brand called Europa, which is the highest end brand that there is. Um, but to get that accordion door to open up and so that you can get a full unobstructed view of the ocean, I really, really, went for that and uh and i'm glad i did so all of the glass was four thousand seven hundred and twelve dollars all right now let's talk about furniture that is the desk the sofa the bed upstairs and the stairs the stairs themselves have these thick pieces of wood on them all of that was two thousand two hundred and thirty dollars all right, now let's talk about cabinets. That I'm putting that separately as furniture. Uh, that's just basically the island and the kitchen cabinets, the drawers and all of that. That was $3,600. Of course, once you have the kitchen cabinets in, you need granite on top of it. So I had a really hard time trying to match the granite and, or find one that, that went with a whole vibe, but I finally found one that, that did. That one was $1,658. Okay, now this is gonna be a very big category. This I'm just putting under building materials because, well, I'm not gonna have individual categories for things like drywall rendering or dies or screws or welding sticks, <laughs> like all the miscellaneous hundreds of things. I went to the hardware store at least two times a day and it was usually to buy these like small off items that were needed here or there. Um, and it's a pretty large category. Um, but it's all the random things that you need, connectors, PVC tubes, like PVC elbows. It's, it goes on and on and on and on. All of that was $7,234. Finally, for the material side, uh, plants. So I only spent $60 on plants. I think it's pretty silly to go and buy plants when we live in a super lush jungle and um, I have extra property that kind of surrounds this place and there's so many plants that I can just go and transplant, bring over there and bring here. Um, also, I drive around and I know spots, the hot spots to pick up on public land. Don't worry, I'm not breaking into anyone's place, but it's like, oh yeah, I like those plants. Go out, have my shovel in my car, throw it in my car. Slowly been populating this place and uh, it's just taken off and it's, it's awesome. So I've only spent $60 on plants and that was mostly on fruit trees. So I've planted a bunch of fruit trees here uh, and also this lemongrass here to keep the mosquitoes away. 
And that was all of the materials. Now, of course, we have to talk about labor. I did not do this alone. I could not have done this alone. I didn't have the skill, experience, or the manpower. Um, so I had a team uh, of builders that we were out here 11 hours a day. Uh, we were all doing the labor. Uh, Jose was the foreman and Felix and Pablo were extra labor. And they work as a team. They're brothers. They are incredible. They're nicest guys, honest, just they were great. So the total labor cost for those three, those were the builders, was $16,235. Now, I also had one more laborer that I had just doing other things that weren't directly related to construction, but that we needed done anyway. For example, when I talked about that electrical trench to dig, um, he was the one who dug the electrical trench and fed the lines, and we had to dig another trench for this fiber. Um, a lot of the plants that I said earlier, I told him which plants that I liked, and uh, as we were building, he was going down. And basically, he was extra help that was outside of the direct labor of the house. Um, and he's amazing. I, I just, I really lucked out, had an amazing team around me. Um, this would not have been possible without them. So for him, he was paid a total of $4,095. All right, so that brings us to the grand finale. The grand total of the house was $67,947. It did come out to be more expensive on a per square meter basis compared to other builds in this area uh, or in Costa Rica in general but I do think for the design and quality of build that it is, that it, I think I'm very happy with it. So let me know what you think in the comments, subscribe. I'm not gonna spam your feed with useless content. The next thing I am gonna do is do a beginning to end build video of this. Uh, if you're interested to see more of the step-by-step -step process, I know that I watched so many YouTube videos over the last five, seven years. It's always been a dream of mine to build a house with help, uh, but to be involved in the build process from beginning to end and watching those videos really inspired me, but also kind of broke down that barrier of, can I do this or can I not? It's just like, oh, it's just, it's just a series of manageable steps. So that's coming. And then also I'm starting to design two houses for 2024. I'm really excited about those. One here is in Costa Rica and one in Indonesia. Well guys, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you around.